Hey everyone, Spicy Toast Gaming here, and they just dropped new cards for the variety pack. So I'll be taking a look at the cards, taking a look at the card art, and really coming at this from the perspective of especially a Path of Champions player. If you enjoy all this Path of Champions content, definitely like and subscribe, and let's get into it. So first up, we have Captain Indaria. This is a Weapon Master, so this card will also fit into the uh, Jax deck, but that's for more the main version of the game. So it's a 5-5. Five, five. When I'm summoned, I improvise, plunder, forge, other allies. Holy keywords. <laughs> so improvise, plunder, and forge. Interesting that this is a deck or a card that looks like it's supposed to be part of the Samira package, but it's actually for Jax instead. Let's take a look at the card art. So she appears to be in a wheelchair and has just a whole bunch of machine guns going everywhere. And this is also taking place in Set's Arena. A little awkward that this is the first time we're seeing this card where we already saw all of the other Samira cards and this one wasn't shown or mentioned anywhere. So it's a little weird. This one just seems out of place. Also, I don't really like the design of the wheelchair and also the guns. Like this gun here is more fine, but like the automatic rifles coming off of the wheelchair. Normally to me, Legends of Runeterra has high technology, but it's still normally in more of a fantasy or steampunk sort of aesthetic. Whereas this just doesn't really seem like it fits in the universe to me. This looks way too futuristic. So yeah, I personally don't really like the design of this. Also this character here, I think this character is supposed to be in Bilgewater when this is happening. So yeah, here you see the card Angel, and this card is clearly in Bilgewater. This card was also released the same time as the Glory in Navori. So you'd think Think that this card or this person is currently in Bilgewater, like this is clearly a Bilgewater setting. I think that they're clearly in Bilgewater while the events of Glory in Navori is going on. But if we take a look at the other card art, that hair, those wrapped arms, the skin color, all of it looks like it's the exact same person. Again, taking a look here and here. So that seems like a strange inconsistency because again, in Jack's deck, this character was not seen in any of the other artwork with everyone else traveling to this fighting arena. So this is obviously definitely very nitpicky but it does seem like this kind of breaks the universe one in the sense of this wheelchair just being way too technologically advanced in my opinion and then also like this character is many miles away in a completely different location so seems a little weird to me all right next up we have the beguiling cobra so a seven cost reptile for seven each round the first time you summon another follower summon an exact copy of it if your board is full, grant its stats and keywords to me instead. So a very interesting effect, but it has such a high cost that it's really going to be hard to utilize this. Really interesting artwork, though. So these look like individuals from Piltover. Not sure exactly where they're located, but that's a very large cobra that is probably not going to be too friendly towards them. Really beautiful art here. I'm not sure what location this is. So if you know, definitely comment down below because I didn't think there was a location similar to this to Piltover and Zon, but I guess these guys could be just exploring. All right, next up we have Perfendiferous Promoter. So four cost, four, four. Man, Jin would love those numbers. When you refill mana, create a fleeting random follower in hand you can exactly afford. So you have to have exactly the right mana for it. That's a very interesting effect. You could definitely utilize this on Jack since you're refilling your mana all the time. That would be fun to play around with. Definitely try this out if you see it in game in Path of Champions. So looks interesting. Looks like the Bilgewater crew are not only fighting in the fighting pits, they're also trying to move in on the gambling operation, which we already saw that since this is Set's arena, they're the ones that are handling and profiting off of all the gambling. But looks like Jack and his crew don't really care and they're gonna set up shop inside the arena. Very interesting characters. I really like his cane here. I think it looks really cool. And I love these wide shots that show more than just one character and you see a lot going on in the background. Also, I'm not sure if that thing on his shoulder is actually alive or if it is just uh, like an ornament. All right, next up we have the innovative or innovative blacksmith. Three cost, two, two. When I'm summoned, I improvise. Each round, the first time you forge or equip an ally, heal your Nexus One. This is also a weaponsmith. Looks like it'll be great for either Orn or Jax. And since it's pretty low, as far as cost goes, you should definitely try to pick this up if you see it in game. I think it would work out great for both decks, especially Jax as, not Jax, sorry, especially Orn as Orn is somewhat weak in generating equipment early game. So having a three cost unit that can improvise and automatically generate an equipment is great for you. And then the fact that you can get a little bit of sustain to heal your Nexus would also be great for Ornn. 
But again, weaponsmiths, so this could also work for Jax. And this artwork is just adorable and wholesome. Just another nice forge in the Freljord, and everyone looks like they're having a great time. Also, looks like the Poro is actually biting and trying to either run away with the tools or trying to help out at the forge. But yeah, overall, just very happy and just a... <laughs> Nice, wholesome photo. All right, next up, we have the Sacrificial Scholar. So two cost, one, two with Faded. Last breath, create in hand copies of the first three spells you played on me. So this would be great for a Pantheon uh, support. Sadly, we don't have Pantheon yet in the game as far as Path of Champions, but if we do, this would be a great addition to his deck. For the art, he's just very much one of the Targonian support cards for Pantheon. He has a very similar aesthetic to all the rest of them, but that shadow actually looks different from the demon most of the other ones are fighting. Most of Pantheon and his support cards are all in the middle of a fight, fighting like a demon of fear, but the shadow looks quite quite different than we see here. So if you take a look here, these are some of the different Pantheon support cards. They're all fighting this large demon. I think it's a demon of fear based on some of the card art uh, text in game. But as you see, its silhouette is very different. At least it looks very different to me. Normally there's a large spike on the front. So not sure what he's confronting, maybe some other form of uh, demon. So similar, very similar aesthetic though to many of the other cards. Interesting artwork, but definitely not my favorite of the set. Next up, we have the Royal Shimmerwing. So five cost, five, four with quick attack. Other bird allies have one power and quick attack. And this says it's a bird. I wasn't aware of other cards having the classification of bird before. Let's look at the card art. So just some very pretty birds seemingly over like Ionia. Just looks like a pretty photo but doesn't really show much character or anything too interesting to be honest. Its stats and everything seems fine. I'm not really sure of other birds to make use of this though. I'm not sure if there's a bird deck at all. Maybe Valor from Quinn's deck counts as a bird so maybe this works for that somehow. Next up we have Grave Companion, a very adorable looking card so far and it has yep, even the classification of dog. So four cost, one five. Each round the first time another ally dies, draw one. So a good just draw engine. Very adorable little card. Although, aw, it's actually pretty sad because it looks like he wants to play fetch, but he's looking at this tombstone here. So who knows if his master is buried there and he's just been waiting here to play fetch for all eternity. Very cute, but also potentially <laughs> very sad. Interesting card though. Definitely helps you out if you need more draw. Could be very good for a lot of Shadow Isles decks such as Thresh or Gwen. All right, up next we have Alter to Unity. So a four cost landmark when I'm summoned to draw a unit. When you summon an ally, grow its stats equal to its cost. That is a very specific mechanic. This would be something that's very good for certain cards because some cards have very poor stats but a very strong effect. So not sure offhand what would really make this card strong, but definitely could be some powerful combos with some specific cards. It just looks very Demacian, although that does look like Scythria right there. So nice seeing her cameo in another card, but otherwise it's kind of boring. It's just looks very Demacia, but we've seen a bunch of other things like this. Hopefully it's interesting card text when it comes out. Pack attack is up next, so six cost slow. Start a free attack with an exact ephemeral copy of each cat ally. They're really pushing a lot of these different animal cards, but there doesn't seem like there's enough to actually make use of it. So for the art, it's some crazy looking cat creature with like bone jaws that's pouncing. Yeah, no idea if this is actually going to be good or not, because it just depends on if you have a bunch of cat allies or not, I guess. Blowback is up next, so four cost, fast, deal one to an enemy and the enemy nexus, discard up to two to increase the damage by one for each card discarded. So obviously very strong discard synergy. This could be absolutely amazing if you're playing a Jinx deck, really letting you just discard your potentially entire hand, level Jinx up, dealing tons of damage to the Nexus because you're triggering her star power with every time you're discarding a card. So it could be very strong there, it would be interesting to test out. Definitely try this if you see it in game. And yeah, we just see Jinx using a gun that is exploding. <laughs> so last card we have Condense. Two cost burst, pick a follower, create a one cost copy of it in hand and set its stats to one one. So it says pick a follower. It does not say pick an allied follower. So potentially you could use this on an enemy card if they have a card with a very strong effect or if the enemy plays a card that costs a lot but has that strong effect so like if you're playing against Viego and he drops Leoric not sure if the, that's exactly the name for it but if he drops like the nine cost card that its play effect is deal half the nexus health in damage so it just chunks down your nexus health by half if they play that on you you can then use condense to make a one cost version of it 
and then you play it, getting that same massively powerful effect, but for far cheaper. So this is definitely an interesting one to play around with. Card art definitely looks like something getting shrunk down and very confused by the process. Especially notice the footprints there as those are the same foot. Those are likely his footprints. So he's now much, much smaller than what he used to be. Pretty great card art, especially for a spell. It can often be difficult to make the spell card art look really good or have any hidden details in there. But I think this one definitely nails it. So that's all the new cards they're adding to the game. As far as card art goes, I really like the Grave Companion and the innovative blacksmith. Those ones are probably my favorite. Don't really like the Captain Indaria. Kind of seems like it breaks the game or the universe, in my opinion. Really interesting that they have so many of these new keywords that they're adding like bird, dog, and cat. So I don't know if they're gonna go back and change a lot of the old cards to fit those descriptions and you can make decks with those themes would be quite interesting. For Path of Champions though, Innovative Blacksmith is gonna be a great card to pick up, especially if you can see it on Orn. Definitely try it out. Also the blowback would be amazing, especially if you can grab that on Jinx really help you do tons of damage to the enemy nexus. And I think Faded Scholar or Sacrificial Scholar could be pretty interesting to test out, especially if you're playing someone like maybe Diana, where you have a lot of spells you can generate that target your own units. No word yet on whether or not we're getting new champions this patch or any changes to the Path of Champions. The patch notes will drop tomorrow, so I'll be covering that and seeing what we get. If you're enjoying all this Path of Champions content, though, definitely like and subscribe, and I hope you have a great day.